Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is one of the best spin-off Pokemon series to date. So in this video, I decided to attempt a challenge I've never completed before. And after over 80 hours of playing, I recruited every single Pokemon in Mystery Dungeon DX. This game has a total of 445 Pokemon to acquire. Every Gen 1 through 3 Pokemon, all of their later added evolutions, every letter of Unknown, and Ryolu's line. With all that being said, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I hope you enjoy the video. When starting out Mystery Dungeon DX, you are met with a personality quiz that determines your starter and partner Pokemon. I managed to get Machop, but I don't want Machop. Luckily for me, the Switch remake allows you to change your starter to whatever you want, so everything we just did doesn't matter at all. I chose Skitty and got a partner in Cubone, and with that, we are ready to head out. I'll explain why I chose these two a little later. Now the Mystery Dungeon games, although Pokemon at their core, are very different in terms of gameplay. You play as a Pokemon and operate a rescue team devoted to saving Pokemon across the world. The early game is super simple, as I can't start recruiting Pokemon until after Mount Steel. But after training our moves and levels, we progress the story and obtain our first new Pokemon, Magnemite, who joins automatically. Now that we have friend zones enabled, this is where the grind really starts. The way friend zones work are pretty simple. You can buy them at the square from Wigglytuff with each zone containing access to different Pokemon. After getting money from dungeons and selling items, you can then purchase these zones and in turn recruit more Pokemon after beating them in dungeons. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's super straightforward. Upon recruiting Magnemite, we gain access to its friend zone along with three additional ones to start us off. I also buy one more with the money that I have. While doing some rescue missions, I managed to recruit Pidgey, Rattata, Voltorb, Poochyena, and Nidoran female bringing our total to 8 Pokemon. Elekid, Plusle, and Minin join shortly after. During another mission, we come across our first instance of a fainted Pokemon, Scyther. These fainted Pokemon randomly spawn on floors inside dungeons, and if you help them out, they will always try to join your team. This can be incredibly helpful as these Pokemon aren't normally found in the same dungeons, such as Scyther and Mount Steel. These fainted Pokemon will become a lot more common and a lot more helpful later on, but it's important to showcase this for the future. We grab Scyther, Aeron, Geodude, and Tyrogue to increase our total to 15 Pokemon. Since there's not much to do but buying camps, recruiting Pokemon, and progressing the story, I'll do a quick speed round of what I recruited early on. Execute, Metatite, Wurmple, Paris, Sentret, Lediba, Weedle, Doduo, Poliwag, Lickitung, Onix, Spiro, Nidoran Male, Zubat, Tangela, Trapinch, Sunflora, Bonsly, Executor, Shroomish, Lenoon, Yanma, Oddish, Sudowoodo, Silcoon, Hoot Hoot, Slackoth, Teddy Ursa, Stantler, Dust Tox, Snow Run, Hound Hour, and Beedrill before meeting our first legendary Pokemon, Zapdos. We can't recruit it yet, but ooh wee, do I wish I could. This has been a snooze fest. We end our first day of playing, recruiting 48 Pokemon. Now, it's important to note that all of these Pokemon spawn naturally in the first few dungeons, so I wanted to clear them out as best as I could early on to avoid having to backtrack. For a lot of the Pokemon I recruit with evolutions, I'll end up recruiting multiple. Since every Pokemon I recruit gains experience as I go on expeditions, all of the Pokemon that I recruit level up right with my starters, meaning all of the duplicates I recruit should naturally be ready to evolve once I reach the post game. Another very important thing I'm doing while recruiting is that I'm doing as many rescue missions as I can because certain Pokemon later on can only be found through increasing your rescue team rank and boy do you have to rank up a lot. It's day two now and after encountering Zapdos I decided now was a good time to proceed to Mount Thunder to progress the story. After picking up Cacnea, Electabuzz, Gligar, Manectric, Growlithe, Pidgeotto, Electrike, and a fainted Heracross we take down Zapdos our first mini boss. I went back to get some Pokemon I missed earlier and managed to recruit Swinub and Farfetch'd before seeing my first shiny Pokemon. Each dungeon has a strong foe that spawns throughout its floors, and defeating them gives you a reward. But these strong foes also have the chance to be shiny. While I can't recruit shiny strong foes yet, I'll be able to soon. But yeah, this Ampharos is legit dead, like I bodied this thing. So my mindset at this point is to grab every Pokemon available from all the previous dungeons, allowing the duplicates to continue growing levels for the future. I grab Sunkern, Spinarak, Pinsir, Zigzagoon, and Baltoy. 
I decide to go on to Great Canyon next, where I recruit Vileplume, Cacturn, Ariados, Murkrow, Tauros, and Houndoom. One of these Pokemon will go on to be one of the only reasons I finish this challenge, but we'll get to that later. Once we get to the clearing, I tickle Zantu. We just laugh and laugh. And then he tells us that the world's gonna end, which is somehow funnier given what's just happened. Once we get back home, we're confronted about how we're the cause of the world ending. Definitely shouldn't have tickled that guy. But now we're few fugitives because no one wants the world to end and apparently we can't be trusted. There's a ton of story we have to complete as fugitives going from Lapis Cave to Mount Blaze to Frosty Forest and then all the way up Mount Freeze to finally beat the allegations. If this was Minecraft that might have been a little tougher. But in the process Absol joins us giving us 70 Pokemon. But I had 69 before I got him which is funny. So now that we're no longer yucky convicts, we can go back to doing what we love, imperialism. Now that we have a bunch of new areas to venture in, I start with Lapis Cave, grabbing Nidorina, Illumis, Nidorino, Golbat, and Nosepass. Then make my way to Mount Blaze, where I get Pidgeot, Torkoal, Mightyena, Arcanine, Fero, and Furret. Nothing much is worth noting story-wise, so I'm just gonna list a bunch of Pokemon now. Beldum, Venonat, Apom, Seedot, Roselia, Nuzleaf, Noctowl, Vigoroth, Zangoose, Pineco, Chimeco, Hitmonchan, Swablu, Ditto, Hitmonlee, Rhyhorn, Laron, and Matang. Wrapping up day two with 98 Pokemon. I start the next story quest heading to Magma Cavern. I recruit Nidoqueen, Nidoking, Crobat, Graveler, Mawile, Jumpluff, Sandshrew, Arbok, Magmar, Steelix, Lunatone, Magcargo, Solrock, and Golem. And then I killed Groudon because he was being mean to my friends. We learn after this that a massive meteor is on course to crash into the planet and somehow that's now my problem to deal with. Bunch of nobodies can't do it themselves! I brush it off, surely that can wait. I recruit Larvitar, Dunsparce, Cloyster, Rhydon, Coughing, Seal, Fampy, Azuril, Mankey, Pilloswine, Badu, and Smoochum before wrapping up the day by unlocking the true potential of both Skitty and Cubone. To understand what I mean, we have to look at rare qualities. There's tons of them in the game that add team spread modifiers to your Pokemon. There's a specific rare quality that turns Skitty and Cubone from great Pokemon into completely broken Pokemon, being Rapid Bullseye. But what does this quality do? It makes it so multi-hit moves like Double Slap, Fury Attack, or Bone Club have perfect accuracy no matter what. Now none of these moves are all that good, so why does this matter? Oh, that's because these moves are bu- Busted in the mystery dungeon games. So pairing an insanely powerful multi-hit move with never missing and suddenly Skitty's double slap and Cubone's bone club and bone meringue become some of the most valuable moves in the entire game. These moves along with both Pokemon being able to learn Blizzard, a move that hits every Pokemon in a single room at once, are what makes Skitty and Cubone such a great choice when considering who I was going to make my starters. To start day four, we recruit Skiploom, Breloom, Shuckle, Clefairy, Gloom, Magby, Pupitar, Shellgon, Slacking, Saviper, and Glalie before finally heading to Sky Tower to save the world. And after hiking up 33 floors, we make it to the summit where we absolutely obliterate Rayquaza after dying a lot. But once we beat him, he looks up and realizes there's a big ass rock flying straight at him. And he's like, huh, that's weird. So then we're like, hey, ble uh, blow that up, please. And then he's like, okay. And then he blows it up. And now uh, we're dead. We're not really dead. I think we were just like taking a nap or something, but we make it back home. And after getting manipulated into not going back to being a human by all these little Babies! We're back as a Pokemon and we're ready to recruit more teammates that will get about half a second of screen time. And now that we've beaten the game, we have the ability to evolve our Pokemon using this weird hole in the ground. Snubble somehow managed to break the ground and fall in. Okay, lard ass. I decided it would be easiest to evolve everything at the end of each day, so I hold off on rushing in there for now. Back to the grind, and with numerous new dungeons to visit, we can really do anything we want. I grab Hop Hip on my way back up Mount Thunder and take down Zapdos again, earning its respect and joining my team in the process. I grab Grimer and make my way back through Frosty Forest, where I beat Articuno and recruit the second of the three legendary birds. I followed it up by going to Mount Blaze, getting Corfish and a Slugma, and defeating Moltres for all three birds. 
I decided to go for Groudon next, since I wiped out the other three legendaries. I recruited Relicanth and some dupes before getting to Groudon, who I managed to defeat after a little bit of trouble. And then this dude just decides to evolve into his primal form? Uh, okay. After about 10 Reviver Seeds get wiped from my inventory, I finally take down Primal Groudon, giving us the big boy as our 145th Pokemon. But seeing that definitely made me hesitate visiting Rayquaza again for the time being. We got Staryu, Wismer, Spoink, Caterpie, Volbeat, Sableye, Grumpig, and then saved a Smeargle from joining his friend's boring-ass Domino's Club by recruiting him too. Also, I don't know when it happened, but I got a Ghastly sometime before the first Groudon encounter, so thanks for doing a good job recording, Kush. I evolved Marowak, Kakuna, Raticate, Sandslash, Parasect, Venomoth, Poliwhirl, Primate, Magneton, Electrode, Dodrio, Ledian, Foratris, Ursa Ring, Beautifly, Metacham, Butterfree, Haunter, Donphan, Dugong, Exploud, Claydol, Vibrava, and Jinx giving us 171 Pokemon. It's day five, and I bet you can't believe what I did today. I got more Pokemon. That's, uh, that's what I did. Cubone, Mistrevis, Porygon, Kabuto, Chingling, Meryl, Barboach, Goldeen, Totodile, Cascoon, Hitmontop, Dusclops, Wooper, Armaldo, and another Wooper, before evolving to get Croconaw, Weezing, Seeking, Altaria, Quagsire, and Crawda. I love naming Pokemon. I do it, and it is fun. We went to Solar Cave to grab Natu, Abra, Mr. Mime, Porygon 2, Hypno, and Curlia. After that, I went to the Unknown Relic for my first taste of grabbing all 28 unknown. I start by grabbing D, T, U, question mark, Y, and P, a horrible Scrabble lineup. We'll get the rest later, for some reason. Mudkip, Miltank, Magikarp, Squirtle, Lombre, Pichu, Caterpie, Bagon, Dratini, Cleffa, Talo, and Ludicolo. We find Tentacool, Wingle, Quillfish, Mantike, Ambipom, Krabby, Ammonite, Shelder, Gorobis, and finish recruits for the day with Diglett, Magnemite, and another Curlia. After evolving everything we can, we had Zatu, Gardevoir, Marshtomp, Whiskash, Kabutops, Metapod, Feraligator, Flygon, Agron, Swellow, Tentacruel, Omastar, and Kingler, wrapping up today with 235 Pokemon. This is my sixth day playing, and it's certainly not my last. I start by scooping up a Nummel from Mount Blaze, and then heading to the Grand Sea where I recruit Skarmory, Corsola, Slowpoke, and Remoraid. I go back again and find Weeping Bell, Psyduck, Horsey, and Anorith. I then grab Munchlax and Flaffy, rounding our total to 248. As you've probably seen once or twice before, my next Pokemon I find are Clamperol, Gyarados, and Mantine all inside this weird house. What is this place? Basically, in certain dungeons, much like fainted Pokemon, there are invitation houses which host a random Pokemon based on the specific dungeon you're in. After buying invitations from the Kecleon shop, you can take these invitations to the houses to gain access to the items and Pokemon that are inside. There is one specific Pokemon that can only be found in these houses, but we'll get to that later. We pick up two Whismers, another Nummel, Mime Jr., Mankey, Girafferig, Drowsy, Why Not, and Dragonite, and recruit both Azumarill and Tropius from Jaw Rewards, getting our team to Diamond Rank, which is still very far from where it needs to be. Our next destination is Stormy Sea, a 40-floor dungeon that is the home of Kyogre. We grab Sphiel, Celio, Vulpix, and some duplicates before reaching the Big Fish, and after defeating its base and primal form, we recruit Kyogre. We get access to a few more areas and story progression, and we're right back on the road, grabbing Shuppet, Masquerain, Charmander, and Machoke before finding a crucial part of this challenge, Evolution Crystals. Since there's no way to execute trade evolutions, and the Switch remake removed items such as Elemental Stones or Link Cables, the only way to evolve these specific Pokemon is by finding Evolution Crystals, which can be sold by Kecleons inside dungeons or claimed as a reward at the end of specific dungeons. But regardless of where I get them, I need a lot of them. Togepi, Licky Licky, and Flareon are recruited before fighting Entei, who gives us access to the next area in this quest line, Lightning Field. We get Jolteon, Roserade, Trico, Raichu, and some duplicates, fight Raikou, and gain access to Northwind Field. I get Delibird there, along with Wartortle, Shift Tree, Poliwrath, Politoed, and Torchic, before taking down Suicune, unlocking Mount Faraway, the location of Ho-Oh. 
decided to save that for later, opting to start a new quest line involving Latios and Latias. As you can see, the post game is kind of all over the place, but I, it's fun. I, so yeah. After seeing Kecleon's goofy ass get robbed blind, I visit Northern Range to hunt Latios down. On the way, I grab Togetic, Carvana, and Probopass. We take down Latios, but he's all like, no, Latios is stuck and I need help. So of course I'm going to help. Like bro is literally a legendary Pokemon. He tells us to visit Pitfall Valley, where we recruit Ponyta and Aerodactyl. Save Latias and recruit the both of them, officially giving us over half of the game's Pokemon. Now, when it comes to dungeon difficulty in this game, there are a lot of ways to prepare for dungeons. Some have a good amount of floors, but give you preparation to make things easier. And then there's dungeons like Wish Cave, Purity Forest, and Joyous Tower with each dungeon being 99 floors. That in itself is difficult, but these dungeons are absolute gauntlets, lowering your levels, stats, moves, and even removing items or money that you have, forcing you to go in at level five with nothing. To make matters worse, both Jirachi and Celebi are at the end of two of these dungeons, and a few of the Pokemon I need can only be recruited in these dungeons. After talking to a couple Pokemon in town, we gain access to our first gauntlet in Wish Cave. I know the other two are kind of just given to you without a prompt, but I'm not even gonna worry about these dungeons until the very end. I end my day by going back up Sky Tower, recruiting Persian and a few other others before taking on Rayquaza again. And when I say this fight not only burned all my revives, but killed off three new Pokemon, I was in shambles. We took down Rayquaza, who then Mega Evolved, because that's in this game. And after defeating its Mega form by the skin of my balls, we recruit Rayquaza, who we will never see again. I finish off the day evolving everything I could. Slowbro, Muck, Octillery, Swampert, Pelipper, Dugtrio, Golduck, Seedra, Ampharos, Dragonair, Loudred, Kadabra, Wobbuffet, Camerupt, Blastoise, Charmeleon, Delcaddy, Charizard, Ninetales, Sceptile, Blaziken, Sharpedo, Metagross, Spinhead, and Rapidash. Ending day six with 311 Pokemon. All right, so we're a week in. That's seven days, by the way. The birds are wildin', so I gotta go see what's up. And they give me this cool stone, which grants me access to the MVP of the second half of this challenge, Silver Trench. Home of Lugia, this 99 floor dungeon not only has a bunch of new water Pokemon for me to recruit, but also has a long list of starters and restricted Pokemon that are fainted in the dungeon, allowing me to farm this area if I don't want to go and recruit them in a different location. I don't know, maybe like Joyous Tower. I hold off on it for now, deciding to go back and grab a few more letters for my alphabet soup. I want to be able to spell out subscribe soon. We recruit F, E, I, C, Z, and R, which means I can almost spell out Fent, which is close enough. I leave again because I can't make up my mind, so I recruit Tangrowth, Surskit, Squirtle, another Curlia, Bellsprout, and Vaporeon. I decided to try Wish Cave just to rescue Metacham on the 20th floor, and I recruit Jigglypuff in the process. It's time for Mount Far away, I guess. We get Hariyama, Machamp, Castform, Snubble, Hapini, and Silcoon before taking them all home and calling it a day. I evolve Slowking, Scizor, Granbull, Walren, and Salamence, making one week complete with 331 Pokemon. A lot happened on day 8, so I'm just going to summarize it all at a fairly brisk pace. We recruited Typhlosion and Alakazam, discovered Mewtwo's location, recruited Pikachu, Rhyperior, Spinda, Lotad, Espeon, Ekans, Kangaskhan, Quilava, Cumbuskin, and Frostlass. I evolved Yanma into Yanmega, and I took down and recruited a Ho-Oh, Mewtwo with its Mega form, Raikou, Entei, and Suicune, leaving just over 100 Pokemon remaining. Day 9, I recruited Ghastly, Torchic, Mareep, Gengar, Gliscor, and Duskull before taking down Buried Relic, a 99-floor dungeon containing Mew. In order to spawn Mew, you have to reach floor 40, which is guarded by the Regis on floors 15, 25, and 35. After that, Mew can only spawn on floors 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 98, with no guarantee to recruit Mew even if you take it out. I recruit Machop, Gulpin, and Sneasel, take out the three Regis, and to my surprise, I find and recruit Mew on floor 40. I go back in, recruit the three Regis, find a Chikorita, and then recruit my first shiny strong foe, Ditto. Which is awesome, because the only thing it can do is not be shiny. I find Makuhita and another 
another Porygon 2 and make it to the end to find 8 evolution crystals as my reward. Not bad, especially given how rare the crystals are. I evolved Porygon Z, Meganium, Snorlax, Swalot, Gallade, Haunchcrow, and Tyranitar to increase our total to 372 Pokemon. Day 10 was a special day as I started it out by ranking up my team to ace. We're only one away at this point, but it feels like uh, it's really far away still. I went back into Buried Relic to farm more evolution crystals where I found Electivire, Ninjask, Eevee, Skitty, another Trico, and Bulbasaur. I then decided now was the time to take on Silver Trench. I recruit Kingdra, Chinchou, Lilip, Cradley, Lantern, and Huntail before reaching the depths where I defeat and recruit Lugia. I gain access to Meteor Cave where I go and recruit Deoxys, who's my favorite mythical ever. I love you. I go into Marvelous Sea where I recruit Weavile and Smoochum, and I also learn that the reward for this 18 floor dungeon is 5 evolution crystals, which is a lot easier to farm than 8 crystals in 99 floors. So I go here a few times to get a lot of them. We go back to the trench where we recruit Trico, Starmie, Whalmer, Love Disc, and then find a Talo in Fantasy Straight. I evolve Venusaur, Blossom, Victory Bell, Miss Magius, Grovile, Clefable, Blissey, Dust. Dusk Noir, Magnezone, Magmortar, Mamoswine, and Wailor. That's, uh, that's a, that's a, that's a big whale. Day 11 Pokemon Challenge, get them! Lapras, Feebas, Snubble, Shedinja, Ninkata, Ralts. Then I get the Munchlax event where he walks past and drops his apples like a little dork. I've seen this event a bunch, and every time I've given him his apples back, but this time I was feeling nasty, so I kept them. And then he cried, so I ate them in his face. At this point, I have a lot of money and nothing to buy, so I'm glad the bank is here so I can flex my pokey bands on all these poor losers. I recruit Cyndaquil, two Eevee, two Bulbasaurs, two Chikoritas, Happini, and then Unknowns, X, exclamation mark, L, B, M, and A. After evolving Melodic, Togekiss, Ivysaur, Umbreon, Leafeon, and Bayleaf, our total wraps up to 424 Pokemon, leaving only 21 remaining. On day 12, I managed to find a rescue mission that rewarded Happini as a recruit, so I completed the mission and the Chansey line was complete. I wanted to finish off the unknowns, so I went in and recruited G H K W S Q N V J and O, completing the entire alphabet. I also finally ranked my rescue team up to Ultra. With this, I can now spawn our final rescue rank Pokemon, Ryolu. Ryolu is interesting because, like I said before, it can only be recruited in invitation houses. And since I needed two, I had to find two different Ryolus in two separate houses. This also means I don't have to do another rescue mission, which easily saves me hours of time. Because nearly every single recruitment I've gotten was in the process of completing rescue missions. I don't want to check this board ever again, but I'm still going to. I found two Ryolus after a bit of grinding in Mount Faraway, practically finishing off Invitation House recruits in general. With a little bit of luck, I went back into Wish Cave to recruit another Jigglypuff and a Meowth. I evolved Chansey, Lucario, Wigglytuff, and Glaceon, leaving me with only six Pokemon remaining. Jirachi, Eevee, Sylveon, Celebi, Igglybuff somehow, and Kecleon. I go back into Silver Trench, and after about four or five visits, I find two separate Eevees and evolve one into Sylvia. I'm also able to find Igglybuff in Mount Faraway as a fainted Pokemon, so that leaves just three. Jirachi, Celebi, and the Shopkeeper. After scouring the internet and trying to figure out just how I'm going to make my way through these dungeons, I come across a few Reddit posts explaining how other people beat them. I start with Wish Cave, and thanks to Thero Smash on Reddit, I devise a plan to speedrun through the entire dungeon, avoiding all damage. But how could I do that? There's Pokemon everywhere, and if I don't fight anything, I'll be way too weak to fight Jirachi at the end. Well, by choosing a ghost type like Miss Magius, I can walk through walls, allowing myself to avoid any any battles should I need to. I also brought in a helper orb, which is an essential item for this dungeon that spawns in a group of strong Pokemon to fight with you. With this, I was able to barely sneak my way to the 99th floor where Jirachi attacked. After using my helper orb, the Pokemon were able to defeat Jirachi for me, settling it down and allowing me to recruit two Pokemon remain. 
Since that was my first gauntlet dungeon I'd ever cleared, my preparation for Celebi's Purity Forest was quite similar. And after looking through some posts, I found an idea that worked. I got lucky and managed to get the steamroll rare quality on my Ariados, which allows me to bypass any immunities or resistances to my moves. And with that, I was ready to go. Unlike Wish Cave, while my level was dropped to level 5, I couldn't bring any items into Purity Forest, which meant that I could only survive with the items I found inside the dungeon. After finding a reddit post by Pergo98, I knew that this might be the only way I could manage my way through. Since Ariados is a poison type and has the ability Insomnia, a lot of the Pokemon that are in the dungeon can't poison or put Ariados to sleep. On top of that, Ariados levels up faster than most Pokemon I have, giving me a good chance to stay strong enough to fight anything I find. So I went into the forest for one of the hardest and most stressful moments in my entire mystery dungeon career. In order to make this strategy work, I had to spawn in with a specific moveset. Swords Dance, Fell Stinger, Poison Sting, and Bug Bite. If I didn't get at least Swords Dance and two other moves, I had to re-roll the dungeon, and after about 20 minutes of sitting there, I finally had a run. I made it to the 13th floor and died. This place is no joke, man. After another 10 minutes, I managed to get a roll with three of the four. Not perfect, but I could work with it. Now, the first 20 floors are designed to grind as many levels as you can and recruit as many teammates as you can. And so I would sit as long as my items would allow before reaching the next floor. By the time I got to the 20th floor, I had gotten to level 25, which was perfect for my strategy. Now that we're past floor 20, my only goal was to make it out as fast as possible, using Swords Dance on every single floor to ensure I can do enough damage and finding the stairs as quickly as I could. I had teammates die in front of me again and again, but I kept moving with a single goal in mind. New friends would come and go, and there were insanely close calls. But after over an hour of articulating and evaluating every single move I made, I reached the end. Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh my god! I had reached Celebi, and upon talking, I had one recruit left. If you've ever played Mystery Dungeon, you know how scarring this last Pokemon is. Sitting in dungeons this whole time, assisting me with items when I needed them. Kecleon is by far one of the hardest Pokemon to recruit in Mystery Dungeon, with recruitment rates reaching negative 50%. But this is the baby Switch remake, so we can actually do this pretty easily. After going into a dungeon and finding a Kecleon store, I increase all of my stats. I bring Celebi to increase recruitment with the friendly rare quality. I use recruitment and rare quality orbs to increase the recruitment more. I wear the friend bow to increase it more. I use false swipe to increase it more. And after using every item you can possibly think of, I commit a heinous crime. I steal items from Kecleon's shop. Enraged, he calls on his brothers and sisters to swarm me, fighting with the strength of Mega Rayquaza. And after a few minutes of killing nothing but Kecleon's, it finally happens. Yeah! We got it! Let's go! Woo! 445 Pokemon recruited, every single friend zone purchased, and 85 hours of time spent on a game I truly enjoyed. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. It truly means a lot. Maybe subscribe if you liked what you saw. It really helps me out. Until my next Pokemon challenge that takes like four months to finish, I will see you in the next one.